How's it going everyone? This is MindBlank, welcome back to my channel and you guys already know I like me some DIY on this channel from time to time. So today we're going to go through how to modify an AIO cooler and change tubing, coolant and lastly how to refill them. I posted this image on Twitter around 2 weeks ago when the ID cooling Frostflow 240G I use on the RX480 right now decided to wee wee all over my fortunately unplugged from mains at that time PC. One of the plastic barbs on the pump cleanly broke off and I initially thought of just disposing of the cooler. But there's some great DIY value here and there's bound to be people like me that are interested in getting something like this fixed but don't have someone to support them in their endeavor. I'm going to go through the do's and don'ts of this so let's start with the barb repair. An idea I ultimately scrapped, we'll get to what happened in a bit, but I initially glued the barb back together with two part epoxy plastic glue. If you're doing this I advise getting some high quality plastic epoxy and be very mindful when applying it not to block the flow from the pump. A very good idea is to mix a much larger quantity to make sure that the resin and hardener are combined very well. While this weld might be handling ready in minutes, curing time can take up to multiple hours, so check the specs of the epoxy and leave the remaining mix out to dry as checkup. When that's hard enough so that something like a screwdriver can't penetrate it or you can even drill a hole through it, that's when it's completely cured. Now to get the old tubing off the AIO you can use a sharp knife and carefully cut along the barbs, that's very carefully, to not destroy any plastic barbs. This particular cooler and many many others use reinforced tubing with 6mm internal diameter and 12mm outer diameter. What I have here is the exact same type as the black tubes I just removed but they're transparent. These cost me around 2 dollars for around 6.5 feet or 2 meters. It's kink proof so that's why I stuck to using the same type of tube and can be easily found in a hardware store near you. Alright, so while your AIO is getting drained of its old coolant, it's time to prepare the new one. You'll require at least 1 liter of this, the reason being that you'll need to submerge the bottom part of the rad with an open port later when you seal it up. And you can also try and make your own coolant on a budget even diet like I did, but ultimately I just recommend you go out and buy a bottle of premix from a well known brand. Pastel colors will work the best with the small tubing. If you go the homemade route, well, I'm trying to keep things very low budget, so here's what I used. Distilled water, which was $1 for half a gallon or 2 liters, car antifreeze, the pink variety, which was $2 for 1 quart or 1 liter, and you'll be using around 150 milliliters in that half a quart of water. You'll also need some biocide, around 2-3 drops for the entire quantity, so either get that off of water cooling shops or go to any store that deals in pool related stuff. I found one that sells this in bulk and when I told them the quantity I needed, they just gave me half a syringe for free. Anyhow, the biocide would have cost me around 20 cents. If you want to color the coolant, well, here's where it gets tricky on a budget. Right now, you see me using red food dye, which was under $1, the kind that dissolves in water, says so on the label. But by the way this looks when I poured it into the bottles, you can already see it's not going to work. It's very cloudy looking and just as I expected, letting this to settle made the pigment separate and even turn the coolant its pre-dye original color. So I ended up scrapping this and used red ink instead, which actually reacted when I added the biocide and made this very intense orange color. Like I said, there's a problem with colored coolant like this and small diameter tubes. So if you're going for a nice effect, get a pre-mix pastel color from one of the big brands out there like Mayhem's, Alpha Cool, EK or whatever. I have no doubt this particular coolant would look good in a custom full loop with a res and bigger tubes, but it's not the effect I aimed for to be honest. It still isn't that bad since it does interact nicely with RGB lights, especially purple and green. Right, so next step is to attach both tubes to your pump. A very good trick to get the tubes onto these fragile plastic barbs, which is normally very hard, is to keep the pump in your refrigerator for 30 minutes and use a hair dryer on the tube end before you slide it onto the barb. The barb contracts and the tube expands allowing for a very easy connection without much force. This is much safer on these plastic barbs. Apparently somewhere along the way I thought it was a good idea to also use a metal hose clamp on the repair barb. And when I tightened it and I didn't over tighten it, that's when I heard a pop. You see, this particular epoxy is brittle when cured, so just remember that it's either of these two options not both at the same time, unless you find some epoxy that is not brittle when cured. As a final solution, instead of re-repairing the barb, I just used it as is with a metal clamp. We now need to find the pump inlet and outlet, so just fill a pan or something with tap water and get a big syringe to inject coolant into the pump unit. The tube you choose at this point doesn't matter and I recommend injecting this with the tube submerged underwater. 
To power the pump, you do need a PSU on which you can pull off this forced power on with a paperclip trick. Connect the pump to it, switch it on, and you should hear a lot of air bubbles. If it sounds like the pump is spinning with no load, immediately switch the PSU off. These pumps are not designed to run with no load and are water lubricated. Doing this will destroy your pump so be very very careful. So if there's just the sound of massive air bubbles, that's fairly okay, they'll work themselves out in a few seconds. At this point you can easily spot the outlet of the pump. If it's not visible in the tank, just use your finger to see which tube has suction at its end. That's the inlet. Ok, so now we can go ahead and connect the pump outlet to the radiator barb. It's also the time to cut the tubes to your desired length. Next step is to dump your coolant into the pan and repeat the syringe filling through the open barb of the rad. Awesome tip here, you make way less of a mess by submerging the rad in the coolant, but before doing this absolutely make sure it's really clean or the debris will be sucked in the pump. They'll probably block the cooling fins on the cold plate and it might be game over. Also make sure that the pump inlet tube is submerged in the coolant before filling with the syringe. This will ensure a fairly low amount of trapped air, so go ahead and power on the pump now. The free barb on the rad should be evacuating coolant freely unless your rad was dirty and you have a clog now. Next step is extremely important before sealing. Move the radiator in every position possibly imaginable until regardless of how you place it, the coolant that's coming out exhibits a laminar type of flow. If you just leave it in one position, the flow will settle, but when you seal it, you're going to have massive air trapped and this will destroy the pump. And it's finally time to seal this off. You do this while submerged, both the free red barb and the pump inlet. There shouldn't be any bubble noises in the pump before you do this, so make sure it's quiet and working as intended. If you do this last step correctly, which is not really hard, then your AIO loop is sealed and working again. Don't worry if there's tiny, minute air bubbles still trapped, it's ok and even factory sealed AIOs have some. Chances are that the top of your rad will always be higher than the pump, so these won't affect anything in the long run. And that's it, you're finished, you can now either throw away the coolant or keep it for future projects. You might have noticed that I've crossed the streams, so to say here, the two tubes. This was on purpose since I hate how one tube always sags and that's why I intertwined them, gets rid of unsightly cable ties on the tubes for me. It's time to check how this works, so I went ahead and got this on the RX480 off of which it came from, still using gallium based stem for this by the way, and I'm happy to report the temps are a couple or more degrees lower now and I have much longer tubes with no tube sag and it doesn't really look bad under the right light. Finally, I'd say I'm around 90% happy with what's here and the only thing I'd change is the coolant. I'd get some premix pastel orange or red or even UV green and use that instead of this homemade stuff. Alright, so if you're planning on doing something similar to your AIO, let me know in the comments down below. Oh and by the way, if you decide to use a res in this, it's much easier to fill it up. Anyway, thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing and don't forget to check out my Twitter and Patreon pages linked in the description down below. See you next time everybody, bye bye.